out here at uh, Burke Road, Billabong Reserve, and um, had a tip off that apparently there's possibly some heresium out here. So, gone deep and I'm <laughs> into the forest and I'm kind of checking all the uh, all the fallen trees because that's where they tend to hang out and um, hopefully I can find one. Got a little, looks like a mycena of some sort. I don't know what that is. But then in the backdrop you've got all these uh, coral shrooms. So over here we lots of fallen trees. And they, they seem to attract these little orange guys. Which they look really cool. But no Horatium yet. There's all these um little BMX tracks through the back of this forest. And um so I'm walking along a lot of those and every time I see a little spot of white against the tree, like I'll show you. Like you see that in the distance? A little spot of white catches my eye and I'm like could that be it? But not yet. Wow, the river's so swollen at the moment. Moved away from the bank a little bit here. And there's a lot of uh, fallen trees over here. So. Gonna see if I can check these out. There's a white spot just over here that may be the start. That looks like the start. Start of a uh, Horatium mushroom. Amazing. Okay, I think that I've I found it. Check this. Just through here. <laughs> yes. Oh, what a beautiful creature. So big too. It's just it's bouncy, soft. Wow. Yeah, I've set up the mirror now. You can have a look on the other side. I uh, I'm probably going to take it take it home, cook it up. This is so beautiful. I can see back there there's another one. Might have a closer look at that one. That's the, that's the smaller one there. Let that grow for a bit. I am actually just so chuffed. Chuffed. I find and there's lots of other interesting mushrooms around here too. I found this one here, I'll show you. See, look at this one. It's really interesting. Hang on a second. Ah, there's another one back there. Beautiful. So it's just populated this whole log. So I don't know if it's um if it's something that regularly happens with this Horatium coralloides. But um it seemed seems that a lot that all the ones that I found are really located at the, the trunk of a tree after it's fallen. And it's clearly a hardwood tree of some sort. I don't know what type it is. But I wonder if that's indicative of, of the um of the preferred fruiting spot for these particular mushrooms or if it's just pure chance anyway I'm gonna um I'm gonna pick them as best I can and then take them home and process them okay picked one here it um 
it's amazing how much, I don't know if you can see that water dripping off, but, oh my god, it smells so mushroomy. I mean, of course it's a mushroom, but it really smells like I've just buried my face in a, in a box of, of cup mushrooms or something from the grocery store. They're re, it's really strong. Oh man. Also, this is the, uh, this is the smaller one. I'm gonna go grab the bigger one now. And here it is. Beautiful. Pop that in my little container over here. Get that nice and cleaned up shortly. Wow, that's a lot of mushroom. I think you got to mince it up though, and it's, it's very squishy. You know, it's gonna, it's probably con gonna condense into something much smaller. See, this here looks kind of similar to coral mushroom, but it actually grows from the dirt, not from the wood. And uh, I imagine it's like very similar in, in in the way that it grows in kind of a coral shape. But um, I don't think it's edible. So I'll leave that one. Um, so what I'm gonna do with the Horatian Coraloids that I've made, look at that, it just looks great, like inside as well. But it is a bit dirty. Um, so I'm gonna make crab cakes with them. Got about 200 grams of the mushroom here, I've weighed it. Um, but the first thing is, first step is, I gotta wash them down. Put that in there. First step is to fry this off. So, so we've got the uh, some macadamia oil, versatile and flavorsome. Mm -hmm. um, get your pan nice and hot, chuck a bunch of oil in there, and you know, let's go a little bit more. And then we're going to get some kosher salt, put that in there, that's going to help it to sweat, and then we're just going to pop that all of it in the pan, water and all, and then turn the heat down a little bit. Now ideally you don't want it to brown because we want the inside of the crab cakes to look white, um, but I'm not super fussed about that. The main thing here is you want them to sweat, so get it to a nice low heat and pop the lid on, and that will help it sweat out some of the moisture. So we've got here some vegan Worcestershire sauce. Uh, we've got some lemon juice, obviously salt and pepper. And then over here we have vegan cheese. Uh, we have some egg replacer, so you can use an egg in place of this, but we've got some egg replacers sorted out, some vegan stuff. Yeah, that's the way. Um, some panko crumb, and then over here we have some stuff to taste. So spring onion, uh, tarragon, garlic, chives, parsley. So chopping all this up into nice, like it, it, it's really reminiscent of, look at that, it's like reminiscent of uh, like crab meat, isn't it? It really looks like the same thing. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna pop that in our bowl. Start with the breadcrumbs. I'm gonna start mixing that in. Let me just grab one of these. Mixing that in together. Let's get some egg in there. Looks kind of gross. Tastes kind of good. All of our spices. Obviously, want to like test at certain points, just kind of just to feel the consistency of whether that's going to make a nice cake or not. I think it will. Add some vegan cheese, and then we're going to add a little bit of this vegan Worcestershire 
Rest is the sheer. <laughs> Sauce. Alright, uh, let's go with a... Uh, let's go with a teaspoon. Just for a bit of smoky flavour. And then... Some lemon. Just a little dash. Powerful salt, powerful pepper, and then we mix. So we've added a bit of uh, oil to the mixture and a bit more egg replacer, i.e. egg for those non-vegans. And then uh, now we're going to try to squeeze it in a crab cake. So, Alright, we have done it. We have here eight little mini Racing cakes. They've been pressed through this little makeshift pill bottle that I cut on both sides because uh, I didn't have a cookie cutter. So now we've got, let's bring it over to the uh, fry pan. We're going to fry one up and see how it turns out. I'm going to use some grapeseed oil because it's got a nice high smoke point. And then it's a little more oil. A little more, a lot more oil. And um, I'm going to gently caress these lovely delicious devils onto the plate. Alrighty, so let's turn them over. One of these plates over here. Alright, so here we have it. We have the um Horatium patties with some beetroot relish on the side, and that is ready to eat on a budget. It's literally better than crab. It's like, it looks like that's not crab, that's like coral mushroom.